Hurry Bowl. I don't have much time for this video because my battery is running down low. But I definitely want to talk about a subject that people don't talk about a lot. Tardy grades. What is a tardy grade? A tardy grade is a bacterial form of life. This bacterial form of life can survive in extreme conditions. Extreme heat, boiling water, even up to fire. It can survive interstellar space. It can survive extreme cold. This is what a tardy grade does. So it is possible for a tardy grade to travel from one planet to another on comets, asteroids, meteoroids, different moving heavenly bodies. If a planet explodes and a rock goes into the atmosphere of another planet and settles down, then a tardy grade is a form of life that can survive that trip. The reason why is because Srila Prabhupada explains that living entities are called Sarvagot or Sarvagate. Sarvagate, Sarva is everywhere. Gate or is Go. Sarva Go. Go everywhere. So a living entity in the material world will occupy any space or any body that's compatible for its karma and its evolution. So therefore, tardy grades are like Sarva. They're everywhere. And that just goes to show the power of the atomic spark called the soul or the Atma, the self. This subatomic spark is only one ten thousandth the size of the tip of a hair. Ten thousand times smaller than the tip of a hair. That's what the soul is. But a soul is so powerful because it's an unlimited, because it's an indestructible eternal spark of God. It's a person. It's complete within itself. But right now, currently, the soul is covered by material energy. So it's looking at everything from the temporary material platform which makes us losers in the end. Because if you're holding on to your whole existence as your body, I am black, I am white, I am man and woman, I'm human, I'm dog, I'm cat, that existence ends when this body ends. But those people who have stepped into bhakti or devotional yoga have an eternal experience, not based on karma. So these living entities, Sarvaga, you are also Sarvaga. Because after you leave this body, you will take on another body in a suitable atmosphere. So in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 23, we find that Sri Krishna is explaining the soul by what it is not or what can't happen to it. That's what the Upanishads do. They use negative descriptions. So Krishna used the style of the Upanishads to express to Arjuna that no, at no time can you be killed and at no time will you be killed. There was no time when the soul was born or came into existence. Neither will there be a time when the soul leaves existence. The soul cannot be burned. It can't be wet by water. It can't be crushed. So listen, even with your atomic weapons, they can destroy the body which is composed of the five elements, but they cannot burn or destroy or crush the soul. Once we know that, then it's important to understand that the soul is not composed of material elements. There are eight material elements in the material world. And what I've found recently, I read before, but I've purposefully put it to memory because I feel it's very, very important. So let's deal with the five gross material elements. We got ether, then we got what? Fire, air, water, and earth. Well, let's start from the top, from ether. A living being who exists on the platform of ether can only experience sound. But in fire, you have both form and sound. And then in air, you have feeling or touch. You have form or vision. And you also have sound. And then when you get to water, you have taste. And you also have form. And you also have touch. And you also have sound. But when you get to earth, you have scent or smell. You have form, vision. You have taste, water, and you have sound, shabda, air. So when we get down to the earthly existence, the last level, that's when you can experience the material world in its fullness. And as you go higher up, you get less of a material experience. And once you pass beyond ether, you go into a subtle experience consisting of the mind, intelligence, and false ego. So these are levels of experience that we have based upon what kind of body we are in. 
five elements plus the three subtle elements compose the sum total of your experience in the material world. Temporary experience. The transcendental experience is of an entirely different nature. And when one has developed sufficiently spiritually and is ready to learn about the spiritual science, at that time they approach a bona fide spiritual master. One who is directly connected in a link that goes back to Krishna. So that's for those who are ready to learn about the spiritual science and take on that discipline necessary to find out what self-realization is. So I just made this video to let you know that even on a planet like the sun, the sun planet, there are living entities on the sun planet. Their bodies are composed of fire. Now let's go back to fire again. The fire chakra or the wheel of fire in your body is located here. It's called Ajna Chakra. This is the wheel of fire. And of course, when it comes to fire, you're dealing with form. Because with the introduction of fire, that is when you can see form. That is light. I had mentioned in another video, but I want to reiterate. They say that the eyeballs are composed of jelly. Inside of your eye, you have a jelly-like material glutinous material then you say well why is that important well when the eyeball dries up the jelly turns into like crystals or like flaky crystals that's the liquid that's inside the eyes so we do know that when mucus another form of jelly dries up it also has a flaky or crystalline appearance and then so we say that's jelly then when you look at the Sun They'll tell you the sun is composed of something called plasma. Plasma and jelly are the same thing. They're just in different temperature grades. But there's no difference between plasma and jelly. They're both liquidy, solidy, and fiery at the same time. So understand that this Ajna Chakra is connected to the sun. Everything, all of this intellect that's focused on the pineal gland is connected to that sun that's right up there in the sky. So I just ask you, you know, keep researching, keep studying. Look up tardigrades, T-A-R-D-I-G-R-A-D-E-S. And you'll quickly get an understanding that material life, living entities can come down in any one of the five elements. And being that a living entity or a materialized incarnated being can come down in any one of the elements, guess what that also means? That means that spiritual medium can also contact you through the five elements. So yes, you can look at Krishna's picture or you can look at the picture of your bona fide, pure devotee, advanced spiritual master. Your spiritual master can communicate with you through taste, through scent, through hearing, through vision, or through touch, okay? Understand the spiritual master is not limited to your material existence or your material experience. There are things that are beyond our experience. I would also like to encourage people to keep chanting Hare Krishna because as you can see the world is bugging out. Dr. Sebi was just murdered. They said found dead but you know let's keep it real. Over 50 holistic practitioners have been killed in 2016 alone. They are doing an extermination campaign, not only on the common masses, but there's an extermination campaign going on with your healers and intellectuals. At any minute, they could take away one of your leaders. There is a lot going on. Someone said on one of my threads on Facebook that this year, the Queen of England said that we're going to start eliminating all of your leaders. So we're up against some serious opposition. And I would like to give people hope that there's, things are going to change and it's going to get better. But that's not my duty. My duty is just to tell you the truth. And if I can encourage you with the truth, then we know one thing. That there is only one good property, one good condition, or one good situation, or one good thing about this age of Kali Yu. And that one good thing is that just by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which goes Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Just by chanting this mantra, one is eligible to be lifted out 
of this veil, this material ocean of suffering and repeated death and birth. That is the only good thing I could give you for this age. But besides that, your bodily strength is declining by the day. Your intelligence, I see it. I don't even want to give you all examples of how I see people are declining by the daily basis. Your intelligence, your memory, your strength, cleanliness, truthfulness, mercy. All of these things are declining by the day. So the things that made you human, people are losing them on a daily basis. All I ask you to do is just chant Hare Krishna so you can counteract that energy. People don't understand the immense transcendental benefit that you receive from chanting Hare Krishna. And people right there, they get material and they say, well, my what substantiates my material, my spiritual existence is the fact that I'm rich. I got three wives and I could do what I want when I want. No. Being material advanced is not the same thing as being spiritually advanced. There are planets, man, let me tell you, below the equator of this universe. There are planets in what you call the underfoot worlds, the Patala Loka, the lower planetary systems where demons and asuras are said to reside. Yo, some of those planets look real nice. They're materially advanced. I mean, it's like going to a neighborhood on the, on the north shore of Long Island then coming back and comparing that to Southside Jamaica, Queens, it's a world of a difference. But the difference is, on a lot of those lower planetary systems, they are lacking in Krishna consciousness. So therefore, they are materially opulent, but they're really losers because you're poor when you don't have God consciousness. And likewise, a man could be bereft of all material possessions, but naked on the street. But he could be a self-realized soul, or at least he could be yoked up. He could be in samadhi. He could be linked up with God. And that being is more rich than the people who live in the most fancy mansions and eat so many meals a day. Because remember, your real wealth is spiritual. I'm not offering you no phantasmagoria. I'm keeping it 100. The only thing you can't lose is the benefit that you receive from engaging in bhakti yoga. There's different forms of benefit. A demigod could bless you. Look, look, look. This is Kubera Yantra right here. Me personally, I'm not a demigod worshiper. I respect the demigods. I love them. They know me and I know them. We go back way long, 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 long time. So this is the Kubera Yantra. But this deals with material money, material wealth. But I also know that he's a devotee of Lord Vishnu. And if I could just somehow convince him that at least if you hold me down, at least I could do more for spreading Krishna consciousness in this world, for protecting cows, for enlightening my fellow human beings. Because when you poor, you ain't got no time to think about God. The only thing you can think about is where's my next meal coming from? So I don't, I definitely don't want to be amongst the poverty class. I don't want to be amongst the sick class. I don't want to be amongst the mentally ill class. But if Kubera could just, you know, lift me up into the Donald Trump tax bracket, then I could definitely make some changes in this world. See, it's a difference when you give a monkey a whole bunch of money. All he going to do is buy a whole bunch of bananas. But when you give money to somebody who has a plan or who's been who's been trained up in a certain way or who's been guided in a certain way, I always like to say that my posts on Facebook, my posts on Twitter, the ones that you see today is inspired by the chanting I did yesterday. That's, you know, that's very significant to me. Anyway, losing my thought, getting away from the original train of thought, living entities can live anywhere in the three planetary worlds, from the lower planetary systems, the middle planetary systems, the upper planetary systems, and they could live in bodies that are composed of all of the elements. If you're having a problem with ghosts, they're sticking around because of attachment. And the best way to loosen the bonds of attachment gently, you can do it abruptly with ammonia, you could do it abruptly with burning cinnamon, you can chase spirits in a, in a, in a rough fashion, just like you can use Kimbisa, an African Congo science, which is known as um, Palo Mayombe. I want to call it Lukumi as well, but I don't want to get them all mixed up. I know Palo Mayombe and Kimbisa are the same thing. And you can use sciences like that to force angels and demons to do your bidding. But Krishna never dealt with force. 
Every time he gave Arjun some advice, he said, look, here's my opinion. You should do it like this. And then after that, you do what you want. Krishna knew he was his spiritual master and still told him, you, after that, you do what you want. Well, at least he gave Arjun an option. But when you're dealing like with Paolo, and I'm not coming down on Paolo Mayombi, it, it has a use, but I'm just keeping it 100. You're forcing spirits to do your bidding, and force is never good. Someone forced us to work and build this beautiful country, and now, look, all of that work is in vain. America is falling down. So all of what, everything that my ancestors went through, was it really in vain? Well, I guess when you're working on the material platform, whether in a good fashion or in a bad fashion, it's all in vain, ultimately. People keep striving, keep chanting Hare Krishna. There's a lot more that I would like to share in the future. But in the event that anything bad should happen to me, I have a whole bunch of videos. I want my son to control those. And I don't know, make documentaries when he gets older. Sell them, you know, because some people are more valuable dead than alive. But I would like at least for the public to start downloading all my videos that I put on YouTube. Start downloading them and saving them because the beast that we're dealing with is wicked. And none of us is promised tomorrow. And no, I hope this video is not a premonition. And I hope that it's not a self-fulfilling prophecy. I hope that I'm around here in this body for much more years to come. At least to share this Krishna conscious message. And to really listen. I want to do some serious work. I really want land. Land is the basis of all wealth. I want to protect cows. I see Prabhupada's vision. He told us, I gave y'all a vision. Y'all got to give it form. I'm ready, dogs. So, Kubera, hold me down. Teach me your yantras. Teach me your mantras. But the reason why I didn't really get into the Kubera mantras.